video. So I'm in the car with Emily, she won't want to be on the camera just yet. Hopefully uh, get her on the vlog later on in the weekend. So we're travelling from Swansea up to uh, Nottingham area, so Thorsby Park. It's going to be about a four hour drive this morning and I need to rack my bike before 11.30 so I'll catch you in a bit. Wanna be the person that you call up when you're down. Wanna be the first who knows all of your deepest secrets Can I be the one who wakes you up before you miss your ride? Cause I wanna be close to you And I wanna Okay, so we're in transition Just walking over to rack the bike now uh, Pretty empty but Look at that backdrop for a race You got Thorsby Park and it's huge So Really looking forward to uh, getting to the race tomorrow and uh, yeah I'll take you through the rest of today and the, uh, the preparation to get ready. Okay so it's the night before the race now, I'm just in the hotel room. Um, what I want to try and do is quickly talk you through what my nutrition is going to be like for uh, race day. So I'll uh, flip the camera around quickly. So, in terms of nutrition during the race, I'm going to have a sachet of beta fuel in each bottle. Um, I'm going to split a precision hydration tablet to make, basically just increase the amount of le electrolytes I have in each bottle. I'm going to then put some of these gels into an aero bottle. So, I'll have two bottles, um, I think like roughly 500 to 600 milliliters. The aero bottle, I'm probably going to put about four of those gels in there probably a little bit of liquid just to make sure they um, it's nice and easy to drink and then one I will probably take a gel with me and then just take a bit of on course nutrition in terms of just water and uh, possibly a bit of energy if I need it on the run but yeah trying to keep it pretty simple I'm going to be taking a decent amount of carbs on the bike so uh, yeah I should be carried up Bye. Okay, so if you uh, are still in the video now, you will hopefully have seen some pretty good footage of the race at Outlaw X. Um, yeah, it was a good day. Thanks to Emily for trying to get all those clips. I've put some photos in as well, which various people took. My mum, uh, Helen, who works for OSB in terms of the media team, um, and a guy mate called Ed Castro who should have been racing, but unfortunately he has an injury at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, you would have seen that or you would probably heard on social media that the swim was shortened from 1.9k down to 750 meters. Obviously for me that was probably the worst decision that could have happened because it kind of limited my um, advantage I had on the rest of the field in terms of the professional field but also the amateur field. So actually I was in a position where I, I didn't gain as much um, in the water. I was fortunate though because 
of the short and swim, they lessen the gap between the pro woman and the amateur start, so I actually only had a two minute gap behind the pro woman. So I managed to catch quite a few of them in the water, I then was in transition with a few of the females, um, such as Nikki. Um, I was chasing Fenella on the first section of the bike, which was fun, and then um, past Lucy Hall, maybe sort of between 5 and 10k into the into the bike leg. Um, I had a bit of a nutritional nightmare. My f my front bottle cage was a sort of plastic bottle cage, and it wasn't very tight on my bottle. So if it had fallen out in transition, I popped it back in, and then when I mounted the bike about 300 meters into the bike again, I hit a little bump. That bottle went flying. Being in sort of that complete race mode, I just carried on. I just thought, right, I've got another bottle on the back behind my saddle and my aero bottle with a few gels in. That should be enough for the race. So head down, I started pushing some uh, pretty silly numbers to try and bridge up to the back of the pro men's race. I managed to bridge up um, past a few pros and sort of carry on pushing. And then I caught Will um, Monday, who I do some training with. And we sort of rode together for a while, which was pretty cool. And then at that point, I'd moved my rear bottle to the front of my bike. So it was in between my TT bars. And then we went into a corner, very, very rough terrain. And slow motion, I could see my bottle just ping. And it went, it just went flying. So we went around the corner. I knew instantly then I had to get that bottle. I couldn't finish the race without, without that nutrition. So I jumped off went and got the bottle, jumped back on, and uh, Will, Will had gone up the road. So um, I had a pretty ridiculous five minute effort where I pushed sort of 380 plus watts, I think, to try and bridge that gap, but I bridged up quite quickly. Um, and then we again, we were riding together. Um, really sorry to, to hear that while well, I, I sort of, I looked behind and Will was there, and then again, I looked back in a bit and he, he was completely gone and he, unfortunately suffered from some back back pain so that caused him to have to soft pedal for the rest of the bike and unfortunately he had to drop out on the run because of it so um that's a shame because the position he was in in the race we were bridging up I, I think I was sixth off the bike and if he had stayed with me to the end of the bike he would who he would have been in a prime position because he's such a strong runner um I was lucky enough to come off the bike in about sixth I think it was um a guy called Will Cohen was just behind me and we managed to have a bit of a, a bit of a battle on the run. He bridged up to me. I then pulled ahead on the second lap, and then he came past on the third lap, and we were both absolutely gone. But he had that little bit more than I did. I think my run was pretty strong, but it just I think at that point in the race I got to the position where losing the bottle, complete uh, coming out of the transition so early on, had played an effect in terms of I didn't get as many calories on as I wanted to on the bike. Absolutely over moon though, because I finished in 10th in the end once they worked out all the individual starts because we all had a chip timing, we all went off at different times, so it was all a bit all over uh, all over the shop, so you didn't know exactly where everyone was. Um, yeah, 10th overall, which was, was absolutely amazing, especially was there such a fit, strong field of pro men and women. In terms of the, the race itself, it kind of ticked a lot of boxes. It kind of showed me that on the bike, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm, I'm able to compete with some of the best best in terms of um bike splits and and the dynamic of the racing i think i'm just getting better and better at holding position and and i hopefully will over the winter and into next season expand on that and keep improving my bike yeah in terms of my run it was a step in the right direction which is it's kind of exciting i i'm chipping away at what i thought was capable what i was capable of, of sort of 12 months and 18 months ago which is really exciting um the run itself was really kind of brutal it was undulating it was i'd say more like 75 percent off-road 25 percent on sort of path so that made it nice and challenging but so to run sort of 122 it, it's no by no means where i i think i'm capable of running off the bike i think i can hopefully get in those high teens if the if the run course was nice and flat but it's a step in the right direction and it sets me up really well for next year 2021 for hopefully keep on chipping away that run and get that time down as much as possible. Outlaw X did amazing. Well, Outlaw, the whole the whole team at Outlaw did a really, really good job of putting on a socially distanced triathlon in terms of the staggered start, masks in transition, um, such a big area so that when spectators were there for their family members, it was so spread out that there was no issues at all. 
if you've liked the footage you've seen today, if you've enjoyed sort of following a bit of my journey this season, then please click the subscribe and the like button. Um, over the winter, I'm going to hopefully do some exciting stuff and then start building properly for Kona 2021. I've got really big ambitions for next year. So if you want to see what happens, uh, keep following the journey, then uh, yeah, hopefully see you in the next video. Thank you.